So everybody has done, you should have done, or you should be really close to being done with making sure your lockdown browser is working, making sure that you can take pictures quickly and, and create a PDF. Uh, remember, I want you to be uh, naming your PDF, test one, chapter two test, Robert, right, first name, whatever. Um, Jesse G and Jesse T will, will give me their at least their last initial too. Um, <clears throat> um, you have tested your camera view, your camera, your phone or whatever computer you're using to watch you take the test. It's going to be charged. It's going to be in do not disturb mode. Um, right? So, um, you know, all of those things you've practiced, you've created your formula sheet, right? Lots to do this week. Okay. Let's make this test. Uh, let's, this is the easiest one. Let's let's get a real good grade on this one. Okay. Um, you've practiced old exams, right? You've asked questions. You can always send me questions via email. Um, uh, let's look at our list of items on test the chapter two test. Right? What am I thinking about right now? I'm pretty lazy. So I'm going to take some old test and then just take questions from it or change them slightly, change signs into cosines kind of thing, you know. I, I like I like at least two limits algebraically, right? So um, two, uh, two or three limits and in combination with factoring, Rata of conjugates, LCDs, right? Uh, all of them repeated with L'Hopital's rule. So that's already up to possibly six questions, <laughs> right? Most likely that's too many already. So um, I, I really don't really see me going past 11 questions at most. And if I do, it would be extra credit. Maybe even number 11 would be extra credit. Just a little extra challenge in it, maybe. Um, I like a continuity problem. I might, I might also ask for the definition of continuity. You'll see that on some old tests where I say, give me the definition of continuity and use the definition to, to show that the following is continuous or not, right? So continuity, I could be two problems, right? Show something is continuous or not. And then like in the homework, uh, find the value to make it continuous, right? So, um, uh, That one could be tricky, too. I could put a L'Hopital's in there, right? And I'll make sure I do one like that on, on Wednesday again. And, and I do review for every test. I review for every test. And I review the whole last week for the final. So the whole last week, I review Monday, Wednesday, and Friday um, for the final exam. So always a review. Um, uh, what else do I like? Oh, I like derivatives using the limit, right? I can see two problems like, like that. One where I would, you know, do something like uh, a, a square root function or, a, you know, 1 over x squared function, something like that, where I ask you to find the derivative. Of course, I'm going to do a tangent line for sure. Definitely going to do a tangent line, most likely with a trig function, right? So you've got to make sure you can do all your trigs if you if you need that. Um, what is it? The unit circle? <laughs> I hate the thing. <laughs> you need the unit circle on your formula page. You make sure you put it on there because there's going to be some trig on the test for sure, right? 
Um, the ownership is front and back of a paper, or is just the front? Front and back and all four sides. I'll let you use all four edges. That's fine, too. Oh, if I find the paper scrap, <laughs> really thick, them. yeah, a really thick pieces of paper, you can write, you can write on this on the edge. <laughs> uh, oh, and the last one is a squeeze, like we just did, like tally, tally had asked for. I mean, that's what I'm thinking right now. Okay, but I still have Monday and Wednesday to change my mind or add something, but I can't really see. I'm not going to do limits at infinity. I'm not going to do numeric limits, right? But everything on here you can double check, which is nice. It's really good chance for you here to get an A on this test, right? So what kind of question would be in the squeeze theory? Like the one I did today. Uh, I don't know if you were here yet in the home, but I'll, I'll go back to it real quick. Uh, I, 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 uh, Tally had asked, I did one, this was number... Question four on the chapter two review for C, I guess it was. I think there was three of them. So I did that one today. Um, and then I, I talked about, and I'll make sure I do one Wednesday. This is one that was on a test from a previous semester. So. All right, Nahum, yes? I didn't record those. I don't know if you, uh, uh, but you're you're studying old tests, so, right? So I don't need to worry about you. You'll be fine. So that's what I'm thinking right now. I'm trying to, you know, uh, um, make things obvious. I get a lot of, you know, uh, things. Social media bashing of me of, oh, his tests are too difficult, but they're always the same every semester. So I don't know. <laughs> um, you yeah, know, whatever. Um, and like I said, you have a formula sheet. You, you can ask me a question. You can jump to another problem. That helps a lot. Uh, you just got to make sure you're not frustrated and you have extra paper and pencils and everything. Uh, when you're taking your test, you can always take a break, go outside, smoke a cigarette, whatever. If you smoke them, if you got them, <laughs> um, you know, get a glass of water. Um, my girlfriend's also a, a math teacher, and she, when, when we were in the classroom, she'd put out two bowls of candy, one is uh, packs of Smarties, right, those little sugar things, and one was a bowl of Dum Dums, lollipops. So at b the beginning of the test, you could choose if you were a Smarty or a Dum Dum. <laughs> I'm like, you're a crazy girl. Okay, we did quotient rule, product rule, quotient rule last time. Um, you got to be practicing, right, as much as you can. Let's do a quotient rule problem real quick, okay? Um, so let's say f of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. This is a beautiful function beautiful function. It's called the Witch of Agnesi, I think. It's beautiful, but it, it, uh, some of you might recognize it. You re anybody recognize this function? It's a blank curve. No, I recognize the function, but I don't know about the bell curve. Bell cur the bell curve, right? So this is from our statistics, right? The area underneath is 100% probability kind of thing. So pretty famous function. Let's take a look at the derivative, okay? And maybe the second derivative too. So f prime of x uh, is going to come from our quotient rule, right? So the upstairs function is 1. The derivative is 0, right? Agreed? The downstairs function is 1 plus x squared. The derivative is 2x. Is everybody okay with me here? And then the whole thing downstairs squared is 1 plus x squared quantity squared, right? 
and I don't want to simplify that. I don't want to foil that out. I'm trying to always factor things. Uh, some of you on the homework, you, you're, you're distributing things when you don't need to. So I want to try and factor more than I want to distribute. So f prime of x for me is going to come from this diagonal, right? The red minus the, the green, right? So the red is going to give me 0, right? 0 times 1 plus x squared minus 2x all over 1 plus x squared squared. So that's nice and simple. Oops, sorry, 1 plus x squared squared, quantity squared, right? So there's my derivative. Notice that at what, when does this, the, the numerator equal 0? When does the numerator equal 0? At what x value does the numerator equal 0? Negative, what is that? Is that Alan? And what x, at what value of x does the numerator equal zero? It's that easy. What what value of x does that? Zero. Uh, zero. And look at the ta look at the tangent line at zero. Look at me on top of the hill with my skis, right? <clears throat> so we're we're starting to hint at chapter four here. <clears throat> when the numerator equals zero, this is called a critical value. I get horizontal tangents. When the denominator equals zero, I get vertical tangents. Notice that this denominator will never equal zero, right? You agree? I have an x squared plus one that can never equal zero if I'm talking about real numbers. <coughs> so there's no vertical tangents on this particular function. Let's do let's do the second derivative here, okay? And you'll you'll see in Calc two we'll go up to fourth derivative and sixth derivative. So um, in Calc 2, we, we keep doing more derivatives. In Calc, in, in Calc 1, we really just go up to the second derivative, okay? Because it tells us something about the curve, and I'll show you what it tells us in a second. Let's do the second derivative. So f prime of x, I already know, is negative 2x over 1 plus x quantity squared. And we see that our upstairs function here is negative 2x. Don't let me go too fast this morning. I've already had two cups of coffee. I'm afraid I'm going too fast for you. So the upstairs function is negative 2x. The derivative of that is? Negative 2. Nice. The downstairs function is 1 plus x squared quantity squared, but I don't know the chain rule yet. Notice the inside function there is complicated. So I want to foil this out to get my derivative. So the upstairs function is 1 plus 2x squared plus x to the fourth. And the derivative of that is 4x plus 4x cubed. Make sure you're with me there. Sorry. Yes, everybody okay? So, and then, of course, we're talking about the downstairs squared, which would be 1 plus x squared, that quantity, to the fourth power, right? And so our quotient rule is coming from this Q kind of diagonal, right? I need the green and then the blue. So F double prime of x is... 1 plus x squared quantity squared times a negative 2 minus a negative 2 times a 4x plus 4x cubed, that quantity. Make sure you're with me there for the numerator. Oh, 
all divided by 1 plus x squared quantity to the fourth. How are we doing there? Are we okay? It's hard to it's hard to stay you keep your work clean and organized. You'll see things will get a little bit easier for us after the chain rule, even though the chain rule is very tough, but we don't have to expand things out. We can we can take derivatives a lot quicker when the interior functions are complicated. I want to factor this, okay? So I want to factor it. So first of all, in my uh, in my g prime piece, I can see I can take a four x out. So I kind of want to do that first. A negative two times one plus x squared quantity squared, and I can take out uh, a four x from 4x plus 4x cubed, and I get 1 plus x squared there. Do you agree with that? Do you see that I, I right, in that blue factor, I've got a, a shared factor of 4x, so that can come out. My other class, uh, my face-to-face -face class, uh, they can't factor. Can't factor for shit. <laughs> uh, I'm worried. I'm giving them quizzes, but they only take a midterm and a final. So, I mean, I'm I'm a little worried um, for them already because I I see what they're turning in for exam things. For you, I won't know until after Friday. But it's so fine. That's fine. So notice, it sounds like they're screwed. <laughs> a little bit. So notice that I can take out a two, and I can take out a one plus x squared, right? And remember, I'm trying to factor. So I can take out a two times one plus x squared. And I'm going to look at the second half first. Okay, I'm looking at the second half first. What's left over is a four x squared. Right? Do you see that? If I highlight what I'm taking out, I'm taking out a 1 plus x squared and a 2, and what's left over is a 4x squared. And the other one, I'm taking out a 1 plus x squared and a 2, and I still have a negative 1 plus x squared left over. Oh, nice. So I can see one of my 1 plus x squareds cancel, right? And then I want to distribute inside. I want to be able to factor that inside piece as much as I can. So I have 2 times uh, 4x squared minus 1 minus x squared all over 1 plus x squared quantity to the third power. How am I doing with speed is there, today? Is there not a 8x squared, the 2x and the 4x? Yes, but I took out a 2. Oh, you, you took out a 2. You took out a 2 because it's shared among the, the, two, the terms. two terms. Yeah. Okay. Can you go over it again, please, Professor? Yeah, where are you? Uh, give me... Where? And the same thing, like, you were talking about, like, it was supposed to be, like, uh, number 3. Yes, so notice in the line 2, I've highlighted what I've taken out. A green 2 and a green 1 plus x squared, right? So I've taken that out here and here to get this. And now what's left over in black is, right, the the 4x squared and, and minus 1 of the 1 plus x squareds. And oftentimes the factoring is easy when you go backward, when you distribute back in, right? So you want to make sure when you factor something, especially on test two, you double check it by distributing back in, right? So it looks like I'm, I'm almost done here. I've got two times uh, 3x squared minus 1 
over 1 plus x squared quantity cubed. That's a pretty nice version of my second derivative. I could kind of, I could factor uh, a little bit more, um, you know, um, I could say that this is 6 times x squared minus 1 third all over 1 plus x squared quantity cubed. And then, of course, I get 6 times uh, x minus 1 over rad 3 and 6 plus 1 over rad 3 and then 1 plus x squared quantity cubed. And why would I want to do that? This is chapter 4, okay? So don't, don't freak. When do you see the numerator as 0 now? plus or minus 1 over rad 3, right? So f double prime of x equals 0 when x equals plus or minus 1 over rad 3. And those happen to be on my original function where I'm turning the steering wheel of my car. If you kind of imagine that I'm not going over a hill. I'm looking down on the ground from a helicopter, and I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the road bend, right? And you can see I'm turning my, at the first black dot, I'm turning my wheel, steering wheel left. And at the second black dot, I'm turning my, uh, other way, right? So I'm turning left and I start turning right, and then I turn back left again. Right, you can see my car on the road here from above. Right, I'm driving on this road, turning my steering wheel left. I hit that first black dot, I start turning right. I hit the second black dot, I start turning left again. These are called the uh, inflection points. First derivative tells me where tangent lines are, either horizontal or vertical. Second derivative tells me where inflection points are, where I'm turning the steering wheel. Nice quotient rule, right? Uh, so if you start looking, if like if you look at my midterm exams, you'll see I I have them doing derivatives using limits, and then double check with a quotient rule, or derivatives using limits, and then double check with a product rule, right? So, but pretty much on your second test, I'm just going to say, find the derivative using the product rule. Find the derivative using the quotient rule, right? Our second test, we will, we, unless you all screw it up, I, on the second test, I won't put a, much chapter two stuff on there. Okay. But if, if you have trouble with it, I will. And, and I like to do that because if you can't do it on the first test, well, maybe you could do it on the second test. If you can't do it on the second test either, then, Hopefully you can do it on the final, and then I can forgive you. <laughs> if you can finally do it on the final, it's fine. Okay. Sir, I don't know if this. Go ahead. No, no. Why do you why do you find that in the, the basically the, the inverse derivative twice? So you're well. Well, we will see that. Our first derivative tells us something. Our second derivative tells us something. In Calc 2, we need the fourth derivative uh, for antiderivatives, um, estimating antiderivatives, and the sixth derivative as well uh, for certain methods of, of finding areas under curves. So the derivatives tell us something. And so second derivative is, is pretty typical. First derivative uh, for calculus. is the slope. First derivative uh, is slope. Second, second derivative is concavity. Is the slope of the slope. Yeah, exactly. Uh, concavity. Yeah. I see. Whether it's a, 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 a cup, concave up, holds water, or if it's an upside down bowl, doesn't hold water. Concavity. We'll talk about it in chapter four. Don't have, you don't have to worry about it right now. Just make sure you're practicing your derivatives. Right? 
All right, let's do 3-3 three, three real quick, and then we'll be done for the day, and we'll have a weekend. So 3.3 .3 is trig derivatives. Um, we've got a bunch of them already, right? If y equals sine of x, we know that y prime is cos of x. Did I prove that one to you yet? I think I did, right? Yes. Yes, yep. If y equals cos of x, y prime is negative sine of x. If y equals tan of x, y prime is secant squared x. Did I prove that one yet? No. Okay, I'll do that one today. y equals secant x, y prime is secant x tan of x. If y equals uh, cotan of x, y prime is uh, negative cosecant squared x. And if y equals co, uh, sorry, cosecant x, y prime is minus cosecant x cotan x. So these are all being added to our shortcut formulas. They all can be proved, and you should do them all, all the ones I don't do, uh, you should do uh, them all with the quotient rule. Okay. Uh, so let me do number three, tan, derivative of tangent. Okay. Let me know if you need time here. Caitlin, Caitlin says she's praying for the the face to face class. <laughs> I mean, if they can't factor, they're kind of a bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in trouble. You'll see most of the factoring. Send is, them all back to pre-cal. Uh, I might even be before that. Send them back to algebra two and geometry. Yeah. I'm really glad we have this formula sheet because I can I understand that we have to memorize like yeah. the equations. That's no problem. Just stuff like this, it would be helpful. Yeah, yeah. You, it's it's too much, and that's the thing about math. I I really think is that it's nothing. Nothing we're doing is difficult, but remembering what to do is difficult. Um, right? I mean, we're not. There's not oh. much. If you look at the tiny steps I'm taking when I do something, it's not much. But the whole thing, it's just like brushing your teeth. It's like every every little process is simple. On Take off the cap of the toothpaste, right? But put it all together and it's really complicated, right? But we're really good at it because we've been doing it for, for our entire lives, <laughs> right? So oh I'm gotcha. do so many practice problems that it like... It's muscle memories. Exactly. Answer, exactly. Your brain exactly. And that's why I did every problem in the, in the book when I was in this class. I did every single problem. I was always worried that I would get a problem that I wouldn't know how to do. Now, of course, when I got my test, I didn't know how to do I didn't see the problem before. Okay. But I practiced enough to, to let things happen and improvise a little bit and see what I could do. Right. And that's what you want to do. You want to practice. And your friends will forgive you. <laughs> your friends will forgive you for. I got to do a math homework tonight. I can't. Yeah. Some of these uh, the trigonometry uh, identities, I definitely need to write down. Cause, yep. Man, those those go in one year and out the other eventually because yep. yep. it, it fades. All right, here we go. Let's do the derivative of tangent. So if uh, show. If y equals tan of x, uh, y prime is secant squared x. So, uh, first of all, I know that y equals tan of x is the same as sine of x over cos of x, right? So it's hinting at, and these will all hint at, quotient rule, okay? So my upstairs function is sine of x. I know the derivative of sine is cos of x. The downstairs function is cos of x, and I know that derivative, it's negative sine of x. 
And then I have to think about g squared, right? And that's going to be cos squared x, downstairs function squared. I'm doing the quotient rule. Don't let me go too fast. So y prime, so my first product is coming from, right, this, just cos squared, minus a negative sine squared, right? So plus sine squared x all over cos squared. Oh, I recognize an identity there, a numerator. Cos squared x plus sine squared x is 1. And I'm going to factor my... Uh, oh, that's it, right? That's secant squared. Done. Pretty easy, right? So um, then found one over cos squared x from the uh, trig identity. Exactly, one over cos squared is secant squared, yeah. Yeah. So all of this chapter is pretty easy. It says section 3.3. .3. So you just want to jump in there and jump right in and do problems in the in the uh web assign. Um, I guess I can do one now, right? Do one more and then quit for the day. Um, just give me a second here. Open web assign. Is you want to test this? Uh, Pedro, one more time. Uh, like the question that you are doing today, like this? Uh, Not on the test, no. They're on the chapter 3 test. Oh, okay. Uh, but it's not, it's not like it's difficult, right? I mean, it's not. It's easy, it's just to know if, like, are you right now, like, that, yeah. like, the formulas that you showed uh, before, just know if I write down that on my formula sheet. Right, exactly. So, so, like, I mean, the benefit of, like, having product rule and quotient rule now is for your first test, I could say to you, uh, find f prime of x if f of x equals x over 1 plus x using a limit, right? And so what's the benefit now is now you have quotient rule, okay? So now you have a quotient rule, right? So I can, I can clearly do this one. For top function is x, derivative is 1. Downstairs function is 1 plus x, derivative is 1. Downstairs squared is 1 plus x, quantity squared. All right, and I get my quotient rule, I get uh, f prime of x is 1 plus x minus x all over 1 plus x quantity squared. And so I can, I can get, you know, I can use the quotient rule to do this problem and make sure I have it right, right, which is nice. Yeah, we can use that to make the check. Exactly, the... exactly. Um, I did a problem like that by hand. <laughs> And it was a nightmare. Yeah, no, but that's what I'm asking you to, that's what I'm going to ask you to do on Friday. I'm going to ask you to do it with a limit. But now you can check it with the quotient rule. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, it's it's horrible. Uh, but so is so most... So I know how to do it. <laughs> exactly. Because uh, I, did, I did the shortcut, and the original shortcut, and I was like totally wrong, because x over the rest, it's just doesn't work with the short, like, the power rule shortcut that doesn't do it that way. No, you can't. No, you, you got to see it as a quotient rule. No. All right. And, and then I thought I thought my answer was wrong. It was actually, I got the answer right, and the shortcut was wrong, so I confused myself. Yeah, so I'm opening a, a homework 10 here on WebAssign right now, which is trig derivatives, and I'm going to pick a problem here to do. Yes. So um, if you said f x like using a limit, it would be like like using 
like as x goes to negative one. Uh, as x no, goes we... as h goes to zero, right? So f prime of x here. Oh, my okay. setup would be the limit as h goes to zero of x plus oh, h. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This horrible piece, <laughs> right? <laughs> And I laugh because I've been through it and I know how horrible it is. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm thinking two questions like that on this test coming up. Okay. Right, on Friday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so here here I've got a problem. Let's see if we, we do one here. Um, let's do a tangent line one. Sure, this one. So y equals to secant of x at pi over 3. Let's get a tangent line, okay? Secant of x at pi over 3. Last problem today, and then we're, we're done. y equals secant of x at, at x equals pi over 3, right? So first of all, if I know cosine, I know secant, right? This is y equals cosine. And then secant is kind of... Uh, you know, doing something like this. And pi over 3 is right about here. So pi over 3, comma what? Well, the book says 2, but let's double check it, right? So y equals secant of pi over 3. Okay, that's 1 over cos of pi over 3. Cos of pi over 3 is 1 half, so that's 1 over 1 half, so that's 2. Yes, agreed. So I have a point, pi over 3, comma 2, I need the slope, I need the derivative, right? So the derivative from our list, memorized, is uh, secant tangent. So y prime is secant x tan x. And of course, you're, one, if you're things you should do is prove that use the quotient rule right so y prime is secant x tan x which means my slope is secant pi over 3 tan of pi over 3 well, I already know that secant of pi over 3 is 2 and tan of pi over 3 is rad 3 yes I am hoping that you you know your trigs well enough that you can tell me the tangent of pi over 3 or tangent of pi over 6 or cos of pi over 7 pi over 6, anything, right? And that, that could come into play for sine or cosine on chapter 2 test. And we'll ask you a, a problem like we did at the start of today that Markins asked about, right? I have my slope, I have my point, I'm ready for my tangent line. Yes, everybody okay here? My dog's scratching at the door. So y minus 2 equals 2 rad 3 all times x minus pi over 3. Right? Everybody's okay here with me, yes? I'm running out of time. I usually like to end early on Fridays, but we didn't quite make it this Friday. Sorry. So y minus 2 equals 2 rad 3 times x minus 2 pi rad 3 over 3. I'm right? just going to get a nice y equals mx plus b here. So y equals 2 rad 3 times x plus 2 minus 2 pi rad 3 over 3. So it looks like my 2 is going to become a 6. Final answer of y equals 2 rad 3 times x plus 6 minus 2 pi rad 3 all over 3. There's my tangent line. And then how am I going to know I got this right? I'm going to graph it right on, on my calculator. Most likely I will ask you to give me a rough sketch on, on, on this one. right? But I'm not going to put a tangent function or a secant function on, on this problem on your chapter 2 test. I'm going to keep it to sine or cosine. Okay? So, Professor, yes, just the uh, question I have is: so knowing these types of, of problems with uh, just mixing what we already know with the trigonometry-based stuff, is going to be chapter two and and onward. But yes, uh, 
for chapter one, you're you're just keeping it with uh, trig functions in find the limit, not like uh, also do the tangent line and also yada yada. Yeah, sine and cosine though. Uh, I'm going to ask you yeah, for okay. for a tangent line on a cosine curve or a, ta a sine curve on on your yeah. chapter two test. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, or chapter one. We don't we don't do chapter one. Chapter one's pre cal. So. Oh my bad. Yeah yeah, it's okay. We're doing chapter two, three, four, test and one. half of five this semester. Half of chapter five. Test one, chapter two. Exactly. Makes sense. Exactly. Oh, Professor, uh, you give us the function. Are are you are you going to give us? The, you're going to give us the point. So we find the slope, and then we just we just exactly the exactly. Yep. Yep. And you'll have the shortcut derivatives, right? You you know that the derivative of sine is cos, and the derivative of cos is negative sine. So, right, it, it won't be anything more difficult than that. All right, have a great weekend. I'll get homework to you. You got homework due Monday. Um, so, right? uh, excuse me, you yes. said we got homework for Monday, right? Yes, you have homework three due Monday. It's on Blackboard. It's on okay, Blackboard okay. in the homework folder. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, what is the test zero passcode? Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. <laughs> highest security. <laughs> Only the highest security here. No, go ahead, Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Go ahead, Nahum. No, no. Yeah, so mine. Oh, you're muted. So I can wait to class and uh, it's kind of overshot because I was like, you got, you got a, uh, some questions from, for me from the book? That's well, fine. I was trying to show you that camera because I didn't come in with the camera. I can use oh, yeah, that's, that's fine. That looks good. Yep. Like that. Yep, exactly. Perfect. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Well, let's go let's go have breakfast. Yeah. What are we doing? What do you need? What yeah. do you need from me? Yeah. Mark is it like yeah, is it doing like two point five? Yes, yes. It's some low tolls, it's some uh continuity, yes. Oh. I see like two point four and two point three or something. Yep. Like from Monday twenty first, right? Yep. Okay. Thank you, I got it. All right, nice. I'm just here, like wait the class. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be the last to go, huh? <laughs> I, I don't have any uh, questions. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll ask. I'll ask my question. Sure. Uh, so back then, uh, I never actually got around to using this in college, but I, I did have. Okay, I don't, I don't want to, like, stress you out and cause you problems for, for your test give proctoring, but, like, I don't know, is it even possible for the online classes to give extended time for any of their students? Of course. I uh have. -huh. So, so oh, are I you see. saying to me you have you have a form and yeah. you want to share that with me? Sure, hang hang out until yeah. these guys go and then we'll talk, okay? Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, but you have extended time. Pedro's open to sharing that he has extended time, and we've already talked. So yeah, like, we discussed it last step, I think. Yeah, like, yeah. Like I, I don't, want, I don't want to like take no, 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 no. time it's, away from your day and all nope, that stuff. Nope, no, I don't, no, no, I don't no, want to no. take much time. That's my I'm job, like, Jesse. It's my job. Um, it's my job. I'm one of those. Okay, okay. Let's let's talk. Martin, do you need anything else from me? Yeah, like for yeah, for this on Friday, like I'm using it. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, 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 you're saying you're going to be writing in a notebook? I, I'd rather you not, but, but, um, it's blank. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. See ya. Pedro, see you. See you Monday. Okay. Robert, one thing that I had that idea, like if it wasn't like only one page, like, because you said that it's brought back. 
I heard like I saw on the internet long time ago. So I'm written in red and blue. Mm -hmm. They use the old 3D glasses. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was planning to do that. Uh, it's fine. If you do that, it's fine. I don't care. I don't care if you use a magnifying glass either. It's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. See you Monday. So, Jesse, okay. send me the form. And then okay. I, the, the thing I need you to do is I need you to know. I, I need to know, are, do you have a class after our class on Friday? Okay. Then that's fine. So you just stay an extra hour and a half. Yeah, yeah and, and I definitely won't use all that. That's time fine, the... but it's your right, okay? Yeah. So, but okay. the key is when I'm saying to everyone else, five minutes left, I'm not talking to you, okay? But I'm not okay. going to say, I'm not going to say like, yeah. and for those of you that have an extended time, yeah, you still, right? Yeah. I'm not going to say stuff like that. So just understand yeah. that. And then when people start wrapping things up at the end and it's noisy, go take a break or something. Okay. You know what I mean? For sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it's it's not it's not something that I, I like to take huge advantage of. It's just I'm one of those students that it just I, I get a little bit clogged up. I get it. And it, it takes me a, just a, just a little bit longer. I get it. I get some it. Things. It's your right, and it's uh it's actually against the law for me to deny you that. So <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give yeah, it to you. Yeah, I just I wasn't aware of what the. Uh, situation was with that online stuff so yeah so okay. most most teachers will use it outside service and they'll watch you yeah but, uh, like that's why i didn't want to like i, I don't want to turn it into that like if it was going to be that way i would just rather like you know really really focus and, yep. and get it done yeah like, and, and you'll see there's there's i think three or yeah. four students that will be have an extra hour and a half so don't don't you know okay. just that's good to know. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's reassuring. Thank okay. you. All right. Good. See you Monday. Uh, see you Monday. Yep. Thanks.